Dayton, Ohio, aftermath of a tornado two years ago. Still rough. Welcome back. It's the early morning show. I know, big surprise, right? A guy with a t-shirt that says early morning show telling you it's the early morning show, but that's for those that maybe don't read. The opening was from Dayton, Ohio, and two years ago, uh, in the spring, they had this, this tornado that ripped through Dayton, Ohio. Now, Dayton, Ohio, for those that like funk, you know Dayton, Ohio, because that's where, like, Ohio Player, the Daz Band, um, Slave, all kinds of these funk bands came out of Dayton, Ohio. Well, you know, the town's just not, not, it's cat. Uh, look, there's, there's the heart. Say, hey, look at that, I'm showing off my heart. Yes, I, I see you. And, and so, uh, you know, it's a funk town. But this tornado came through, and it just, it ripped through these neighborhoods. And, and I never went to look at it. And I go to Dayton to work. About once a month I'm there. And so, um, then, you know, I'm on the interstate one day and I look and I go, and I look at these trees. I see, that's where the tornado went through. And so I had, uh, I, I finally had a little time, took a, got off the interstate and went in and looked at this, at these neighborhoods. And it's just, you know, a lot of it's rebuilt, but there's just some really bad spots. And the trees, the trees they just have that ungodly sick feel and look to them because, you know, just so much is busted off of them. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's the power of a tornado. Those that live in tornado alleys, you know, there's great fear when there should be with them. and But there's also just this awe of what they do. And um, uh, uh, just something else so that, that was my opening shots there um uh, from and like i said tornado over you know just about two years ago so kind of interesting um so we got um music i uh, oh hey he has music i have cat here he's purring rather loudly so um he got me up really early today he had to sleep on my legs for whatever stupid reason and that didn't help my back and so I'll screw it all here we go Nice, nice batch of music this week. Um, the show, I have a heavy book end down here, so my, for once my albums will not all flap over as I talk. So we're excited about this. So let's begin this week. Because I really have no news. It's um, airports are getting busier. We are. On, you're now starting to sit next to people. Delta's been very good, but it's just booking up. So um, it's. Just, just the way it is. Wear your mask. You should be okay. Um, that was my public service announcement, I guess. But let's begin with this one. Kaigeki Moyo. I'm sure that was wrong. Uh, and I listen to a lot of people print, you know, say it, and they all sound like they say it right, and then I come with it. Kaigeki Moyo. It translates to geometric patterns. So shall we just say geometric patterns is the name of the group, Okay. A lot easier to say. Out of Tokyo, 2010 is when they formed. It was neat with these guys. Is the the first two years, um, 2010 to 2012, they were busking, just out there on the corners playing. And when you listen to the music, you go really wow. <laughs> what were they busking to? Can you really do psych? Because this is what it is. It's J Japanese psych, and and this was a pivotal group that really got the Japanese psych rock movement going. I mean, back in the late 60s, 70s, Japanese psych rock was incredible. And, you know, I don't know a lot about it, but for um, Christmas, I gave my buddy Bill Young a book on Japanese psych rock. Uh, he's a Michigan record club. He, he knows so much about it. He loves it. He digs into it. Uh, he teaches me what I need to know about it. Uh, and, you know, I go over there, he'll put on different uh, psych rock bands for me to listen to, which is always fascinating. Well, you know, these guys have done the revival. This is my third album from them. This is their first full-length LP. It came out in 2014. 
They had an EP, and then this would shoot. You don't need to headbutt me, okay? We're, we're talking, too. You know, if it's your channel, maybe, maybe, maybe you should be a little more attentive to the whole damn thing. Um, sorry about that. Uh, look at that. You know, nice splatter vinyl. Ooh, pretty, pretty. Uh, it, great, great, great album. Uh, really enjoyed it. Uh, Semicircle was a song on here. It's almost like folk psych. There was a song Snakes and Mirrors, I believe. Um, smoke and Mirrors, Smoke and Mirrors. It's kind of a improvisational psych, I would have to say. It just starts going in different directions and around different things. But yet, you can hum to it. And if you can hum to a song, then that's pretty damn good. Uh, there is, on the second side, there's a song called Streets of Calcutta. It has almost like this punk meets Eastern folk music. So, I mean, Calcutta, okay. So you get that huge tinge of Eastern mystic music with this kind of a punk feel to it. Uh, it just, you know, obviously... For those that really like Psych, you know this band, you're familiar with it. Oh, another kind of game oil, big deal. Another Geometric Caverns album. But if you don't, it's it's fun music, it's accessible music to kind of get into something new and what's coming out of Japan. Now, actually, they live in Amsterdam now. I mean, you, you become big in Japan, what, what do you do? We well, moved to Amsterdam. Everyone knows that, and uh, that's where they live. So, um, good stuff. Really um, happy to pick up another album from that group. Very exciting. <laughs> Next one. I never would have bought this in a billion years, except for Dave at Local Bandography. Dave at Local Bandography, there, I gave self promotion twice. He um, he sent me a message and says, Hey, you know, you're on Vinyl Me Please. He says, Yeah, can you order me this album? Because he's now a member of Vinyl Me Please. I said, Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. I've, I've done that for other people. Uh, and I says, well, what is it? And he says, oh, my God, it's, it's a great jazz album. This is so hard to find. This is an important jazz album. It's, it's incredible. Uh, it goes, and the original goes for a lot of money. Uh, you should get one. Dave's telling me this is great, and I should get one. And so I ordered me one. Only afterwards thinking about what Dave listens to. Dave likes, well, he likes punk. Yeah, I love punk. But he likes free jazz a lot and I don't get it but I ordered it. I ordered it because Dave says it's great so uh, you yeah, know you know um, I'm glad Dave to say you know jumping off a bridge really is the right thing to do okay daddy I'll, I'll do that right away um, okay so I go away right, so Sonny Chirac <laughs> let's get in about the album my god oh Jesus alright so Sonny Chirac he um Born in uh, 45, he actually died in 94, kind, kind of young. Uh, free jazz guitarist. He actually started as a doo-wop singer. Then he heard John Coltrane play on Kind of Blue, Miles Davis' album, and he took up the sax. Well, he found that um, he has asthma, and he was unable to play the sax. So he got into the electric guitar. And in the 60s, he, uh, he uh, played a lot with Farrell Sanders. Well, Farrell Sanders is one of those dudes that just, he's out there, man. I mean, his music is like, what the, what? You know, okay, <laughs> the godfather of free jazz, all right? Well, Sonny Chirac was one of the very first jazz guitarists to go into free jazz. Well, this was his album from um, 1991, I believe. And um, on it is Farrell Sanders plays on here. And it is considered, besides being in beautiful red, a, uh, one of those free jazz masterpieces. 
my thoughts. As a person that absolutely does not get free jazz, I listen to it and scratch my head and go, oh, that's not very relaxing, is it? Is I liked a lot of it. I thought the guitar playing, Sonny Sirach's guitar playing was incredibly good. And I liked it. The rhythm section, the drums, the bass, they, they laid down a great groove. Oh, it's an exclusive. I'm number 200. Hey, I did. Wow, that's kind of cool. You know, does that mean anything? I think it means nothing. We just get excited as a record collector about something stupid like that. Go, oh, wow. Um, I have no idea. There's two zeros in front of it, so maybe there's 9,000 of them. I, who knows? Okay, uh, I digress again. So the guitar playing, the, the rhythm section, I think is good. Farrell Sanders and that sax. It, 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 it just sounds like someone stepping on a squeaky dial, someone strangling some innocent little furry animal. I, um, some, someone is, is just um, screaming. It, it, uh, it's, it's, it's noise to my ears. Noise. Now again, I love this guitar playing, and I and I and, and I would keep this album because it is an important album. I mean, I I only have so much room, but there's a lot of great things on this. But I just still am not a Farrell Sanders fan, and I think Tales from the Crate. Andrew loves Farrell Sanders. So many of you love Farrell Sanders, and that's great. You get it, you understand it, and I salute you for it. Uh, I'm not there yet, uh, you know. I'm going to be, in, in a couple of days, I'm going to be 62. March 2nd, a birthday. Um, I may, I near 10 years, I plan to like Farrell Sanders. So let's say um, 2032. No, 2031. 2031, we're going to like Farrell Sanders. Mark my words, okay? If, any of you're still, if I'm still around. Right. Uh <laughs> Dave Brubeck Trio, and this was cool. This was um, VCLT, and this came to me from John Bolger. John Bolger's out of Ireland. He he doesn't have a channel, but he runs a Dave Brubeck site. It's www.davebrubeckjazz.com. If you have any interest in Dave Brubeck, if that's someone you like, you need to go onto the site because it really goes into everything Dave Brubeck. This album came out in, I believe, 1967, 1967. But you see this photo? This photo was taken by John Bolger when they were on this tour. And he gets his credit, contributor. See? Isn't that neat? That's it's so exciting. So to get this album from someone, that's his photo on there. And and, and it just it and and John is he is everything Dave Brubeck. And and after the flood, John gave me this tremendously big box of albums, jazz, uh, a lot of different things. And there was a lot of Brubeck in there, it was very, very good. But notice that this was from, from one of the last times the Dave Brubeck uh, Quartet played together. But you look at that picture, there's only three. Someone's missing. Paul Desmond. So what had happened, the night before, Paul Desmond went out with another jazz player. And they tied one on, and they went down to Hamburg to the Red Light District. Uh, this was from a European tour. And they got so wasted and so blasted that Paul was not able to play the next day. <laughs> so the Dave Brubeck Quartet became the Dave Brubeck Trio for this album. John was there and captured the moment. 
Isn't that just fun? I mean, that's just the cool stuff. I mean, it's just incredible. I, I, I love that kind of information. And so, um, again, it's from the European tour one of the last times that this quartet played, but they played as a trio this night, which never really happened. So really neat. Uh, it's just, it's good live jazz going on. You know, they're finding all these tapes and everything, and they're putting them back out. And so really important stuff. Uh, this is available only in Europe right now. And so it's just super exciting that... Um, John sent this to me, but the thing is, that's his picture, and that is awesome, and that's the greatest treasure that I, I could ask for. You know, this is one of those albums that will forever be important to me, because John Bolger did that, so super neat. Uh, if you like Dave Brubeck, this is, you'll love this. Really, really good. And <laughs> that history behind it's great. <laughs> This week we have Bro Valentino. Is that anything special? Oh my god, this is just like, this is color. If you're watching in black and white, I apologize because you're missing out on just this great color stuff. Um, what the, I don't know what color you would call that. Bro Valentino. Um, this is, it's really, this is two songs. It's kind of like Cootie. Fella Cootie, he put out two songs. One, one, one on each side, but they're really, really extended jazz. This is from Trinidad and Tobago. It's Calypso music, kind of. So, um, Bro Valentino, Anthony Farrell Philip was his name. Born in, God, when was he born? Well, I can't think of it now. Fairly young, I think around 40 or something. He's probably about 30 when he made this. Um, he, he, he was playing calypso music. He's in Trinidad, Tobago. What do you play? You play calypso music. But in the early 70s, he got involved with the Black Power Revolution. And that profoundly changed him. You think of calypso as party music. I mean, that's, that's what's on. It's, for, uh, it's um, you know, for uh, Mardi Gras, things like that. Well, he took it. And he called it Calypso with a Conscience. And uh, the people called him the, the People's Calypso Persona. Persona. Person. I don't know. Uh, but his music, his lyrics, dealt with what was happening. So this here, um, these, these are uh, one song's from 79, one song's from 1980, and they're really anti-apartheid. Uh, you have uh, Stay Up Zimbabwe and Ah Whoa, Brand New Revolution. So you have the kind of Calypso beat going on, but with really political stuff. Great music. It's really more Africa. I didn't feel a lot of that Calypso in there. It, you, you can hear it. It's in there, but it's not as heavy and becomes more of this great African vibe going on. So, good stuff coming out of Analog Africa, out of Trinidad, Tobago. Pretty neat. You got to get rid of the enemy. If you don't get rid of the enemy, the enemy shall get rid of me. My people, you see, we have to try. Then we flip into this one. And I got this locally. Um, Phil Wick and Pegasus. Uh, and it's on A. The label is. This is an OG. Uh, chapter 1. I'm not going to bother to put that in because I'll take another five minutes to do. Uh, total blind buy. I, uh, a friend of mine had this. He sells at an antique booth. And he asked me, hey, you interested in this? And I, mm, 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 mm. I mean, it wasn't like, you know, a $5 album or anything. It was just 
you know what? Okay, well, let's 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 give it a try. Really, not knowing what it is. This came out in 1970. Phil Wick and Pegasus. It's Baroque pop, psych pop. I guess might be the best way to describe it. And the um, the main man is Philip uh, Mark Wurtz. Mark Wurtz, and he wrote kind of what he called an arty song cycle. Kind of scares you when you say arty song cycle, huh? A lot of the songs really, he decorate them with um, accessible, shall we say, um, kind of ambitious instrumentation. Uh, that almost gives it an easy listening type of a feel. I mean, it, it, it really does. Uh, it has a kind of a laid back L.A. country folk rock feel. But there's really no country, but it's that kind of a thing. A little hippy dippy um, type vibe to it. Um, there's like Beach Boy Baroque in here. There's a song called And She Came, and the harmonies are really kind of cool that way. And you can kind of feel that Beach Boy, um, not, not the surf stuff, but as they uh, went forward and trying to expand their sound. It's really a mishmash of um, softer rock styles it is it was something different it was uh you know a blind buy i carry i think i actually pulled up a song i listened to it i go mm, but i gave it a shot it is just something different i've never seen out there and maybe other people have it like it chris keebler you gotta have this you chris if you're watching you must have that uh you have the most, the most odd <laughs> records you show go, what you got that um so it's something different um I, 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 you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see where that will land in life with me. Uh, I have to listen to a few more times. Was interesting this came from record store day half a year ago half a year ago probably maybe longer black it is Marcy Lurac Lurac Luarx Marcy Luarx it is um, it's called classic touch and this was a huge Nigerian um, hit uh, it was really big it's called electric murder um, it came out uh, actually a classic touch in electric murder and in in nigeria it was part of the disco boogie um uh, phase that was going on and this thing was big it was a uh, nigerian disco uh, and you know the thing is marcy she came out of topeka kansas so she's in college and she meets a guy the guy's out of from nigeria he's a record producer well marcy sings in the choir gospel and all that and this guy falls in love with her voice wants to produce her they actually wind up getting married then they move to nigeria and they moved to nigeria in um was it 79 benin city and in 80 they put out this uh, and it is it is disco uh, it's dance music it's it really has this vibe you know, she's Kansas man you can hear that but Nigeria this you know in, in English is good so uh, it, there is no now the African feel like the high life sounds are just so popular you don't get any of that it is just more kind of a uh, soul funk in an African way so you know you can still find this out there from record store day it might even be on clearance uh, really neat uh, it was uh, her, her 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 person her inspiration is Michael Jackson and so she tries to get that kind of feel going with some of the music so it was really neat to listen to this and find out uh, just something different right uh, African music, but not African music, but it is African music because only 5,000 of those were made. So to get an original right now is like $1 billion or something. Um, so that's a classic. Like a man, go get on. 
By way of Kansas, of course. Final one. Uh, this is a, this is some SCLT I got, uh, and I uh, from Olaf. Olaf debut, debates. He, God, this guy sent me. He sent me some really cool things. So Guru Guru, uh, and the name of the album is Guru Guru Mani Un Cien Friend. It's Manny and Friends. I figured that part out. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, it, Guru Groove uh, formed in 68 in Germany. It's a kraut rock uh, free jazz band. I just used the word free jazz twice in one of my videos. Oh my God. Um, and, and, and so Manny uh, New, Newmeyer, Newmeyer might be it. I can quite read, I think, Animal House. Um, he was the drummer and the vocalist for this group. Uh, and so he did this kind of with his friends. And this came out in 75, I believe. Uh, it was their eighth album from Guru Guru. Guru Guru is still playing. And they have made over 40 albums. And the 40 albums and CDs, they've sold over 500,000. Think about that, though. 500,000 and 40 divided up. Oh, okay. Uh, I you know there's some guys who go, hey, well, that's not that many. But they have a great career. It's still going. They're still playing. Uh, Kraut rap, it goes into free jazz type of a, a feel. Um, so I'm listening to it and not really knowing what this is. Is it prog rock? Is it jazz rock? What am I really listening to? Some of it, there's this nonsensical humor going on. I It was, it was different uh, and I'm just trying to wrap my head around what's going on there's a song on here um, uh, the woodpecker's dream and you know there's like forests and there's a water and there's the bird chirps and stuff and and it was like mm hmm okie dokie uh, all right that's that's all right but then there is um, you know some some of the uh, some of the other songs are easily much more accessible um, and uh, enjoyable. Uh, it was, um, I'm trying to think, oh, what was it? Oh, side one. Side, side one is, uh, it, the music made more sense. I thought side two got a whole lot more experimental with, with the music. And, uh, you know, there's one called, um, like, um, Sunrise what was it? it had such a such a tribal beat to it um god i can't think of it uh but it was really like almost like an african beat going on really different uh, this, this album is not not the cheapest album out there when you look on discogs and it's something i want to wrap my head around more my head's not totally wrapped around it <laughs> it and man alive it's still going to go almost 30 minutes i've really gotten long lately i don't know why but it is it is what it is so thanks for watching hey, later on today i'm doing an interview with rachel the music ma'am so um hey drop by watch it it'll be it'll be up later um we're just going to talk around for an hour and you know something i can do i can blab so uh thanks everyone have yourself a great week it got warm here hopefully it's warm by where you're at too bye